Hello, hello there, my crafty friends. It is Candy from SweetStamper.com, and I'm so pleased to be here with you today for Teach Me Tuesday. We're gonna have some fun today. I'm gonna show you a little uh, tips and tricks about some of our inks, and also we are going to do a fun fold. So I will just give it a couple of minutes here while I continue to get my space ready and make sure that everything is coming through in the right place. Yay, I'm actually on my Sweet Stamper page and I'm actually coming through loud and clear on the camera. Hey Jackie, I'm glad to see you here today. Thank you for joining us. And Jill is here as well. I'm so glad to see you, Jill and Susan and Veronica. Okay, we've got people already jumping in and um, hello beautiful back at you, Veronica. That's a lovely sentiment on this beautiful, beautiful sunny day here in San Antonio. It's a little bit warmer than normal. Hey Judy, I'm glad you're here. Hey Susie, but I will say, I mean, it is one of those Chamber of Commerce, blue sky, gorgeous temperatures. Um, a little warm for, for my taste right now, but that's okay. We've had it really good. We've had some gorgeous cool weather, which is always my favorite. Hey Marlene, I'm glad you're here. So we are going to get going. I am continuing to uh, celebrate the retiring list. Hey Gail, I'm glad you're here. So uh, we will kind of talk about first things first, and then we will move towards retire. Uh, what we're gonna, what we're going to stamp here today. So let me go ahead and bring camera down and make sure we're in range. Okay, and I know uh, Gail. I think you sent me an email, and I'm going to get to it. And I will. No, I'm still here. Okay. Hey, Lori. I'm glad you're here. Hey, Simone. Okay, well, you know, it's just one of those Facebook things, you know? This never happens any other time except when I'm live. Okay, sorry about all the interruptions. Okay, first things first, and um, took me a little, little while to get going here. Okay, first things first is uh, it is new catalog time, and, uh, well, it will be next month. So... As a demonstrator, I have already received my new catalog, and I actually am not allowed to show you the inside of the catalog just yet. Um, and I actually probably would not anyway, because I'm not big on sneak peeks. We have a whole year to enjoy this. And it's kind of like for me at, at Christmas, if I start doing Christmas stuff in, like if I start decorating the house in October, by the end of December, I'm really quite sick of it. So I want to actually kind of put off the joys of this. And there are lots of joys in here, uh, don't get me wrong. But we're gonna have a whole year to enjoy them. So um, yeah, Mary, I know you keep losing me. I, I was losing you too, so I apologize for the, the Facebook feed uh, mishaps. Um, but the reason I am showing you this is I'm going to be putting out my email news later this afternoon with the opportunity to sign up to get a catalog from me. And you sign up getting it from me for free uh, as long as you've placed an order within the last 60 days, sorry, six months, uh, not 60 days, six months, then I will send you a catalog for free. Now, um, if you're local, um, and whether you've placed, what, even if you haven't placed an order, you're welcome to come by and just pick one up. So I do have free catalogs for all of my customers, but I know that some of y'all are demonstrators, so you're already getting a catalog. Some of you shop with other demonstrators besides just me, so you get, you know, you have other places to get them. So I just wanna make sure I get catalogs into your hands if you're wanting one from me. So stay tuned for that. Um, and with that in mind, before I go any farther, I am going to do one little sneak peek for you, and that is one of the new in colors. I will tell you the new in colors are absolutely fabulous. You're going to fall in love with them. Um, I, you know, a lot of times the in colors, I have to, uh, kind of do a slow, um, 
kind of a slow walk towards some of them. <laughs> uh, I will tell you that on this one, Magenta Madness took me a little while to come around to because it's just so, so bright. But I will tell you that this new set of end colors, I'm in love with all of them upon first sight. It's love at first sight on all five of them, which is a little bit unusual for me. Some, oftentimes there's like one, sometimes even two that I kind of have to slowly warm up to, but this time I love them all. And what I'm, what I'm showing you here is the end color. It's called Pale Papaya. It doesn't really tell you much of the story. But I wanted to show you the way that I like to do my new ink pads and, um, and the reason I do. So on the back, you will find this label, this sticky label, but it has like a little tab on it and it will have like a little arrow. Now this is a pale color, so it's a little harder to see, but there's a little arrow there. And if you lift that arrow and then just peel slowly back, it's gonna leave behind five pieces of the color and then you can take the negative image of that off and just throw that away. Now it's going to give you the color, the end color in five, well four different languages and then a solid one. Now obviously I speak English so I need the English one and I'm going to place this label right here on the front of my pad. And the reason I do that is uh, a couple of reasons. And, and like I said, this one's really pale. It's called Pale Papaya. Um, elf and see exactly what color it is without having to pick it up and look at it. So I do that one there. Then I take one of the others that is usually in uh, French or like this one says Papaye Pale. It looks pretty close to Pale Papaya in a different language. So I'm gonna put that one on the back. And the reason I do that is because sometimes when I'm stamping, even though I put them away like this in my shelf, if I have this out on my table and this gets turned around, I can easily see on the other side what color it is. And then last but not least, there is one that is a solid piece of the color. It does not have any writing on it. And I take that one and I put it on the inside in the little trough right here. So this little area here, I like to put this right in there. And that means that when I'm looking at my stamp pad and it's open, you cannot tell by looking at the ink pad what color it is. But this gives me an idea right here. Uh, sometimes they're a little bit, like I said, this is pale papaya. It is a pale color. This is a little bit off, so I'm gonna lift it and try again. Um, I need to get this over here a little bit farther. So that's what I do with all of my ink pads, and I hope that that will be a tip that will help you so that when you are, um, when you're getting your new ink pads, you can put them away in such a way that when it's open, I can tell the color, when it's at the front, I can tell the color, and when it's the back, I can tell the color, and of course, from the top. So that's just my quick tip on how to, um, how to arrange your new ink pad, how to get it ready for stamping. So hopefully you will enjoy that tip. Okay, now I'm gonna go over a little bit of show and tell with you, and then uh, we're gonna do a little review, and then we're gonna do some stamping. So I wanted to show you a couple of cards that I got in the mail for Easter. This one, I've, I think I've already shown you, yeah, I showed you several before, because I started getting Easter cards like several weeks before Easter. This one, and I don't really want to show you all the inside, pretty, all the cool words. This is from my dear friend, Ione. I love how she puts just that little strip of designer paper right there. And this is one of my favorite items in the um, spring catalog. And this is those vine design dies. And I just love them. So this is the oval one. And of course, she made it into an Easter egg, which is super sweet. So I love this. And then this card, I hope she's on here today, Kathy Spears. Um, I absolutely love this card. Uh, this is from the Inspiring Iris, which was my Cards with a Twist class for March. 
And she had some very nice things in here to say, and basically that she loves the cards with a twist clasp, loves this paper, and she just took all a bunch of the scraps of the paper and made a patchwork quilt for a background. And I think it's just a stellar card, and I hope you like it too. And quite a few of them, it looks like she cut them out with the same die. Um, so really fun. And just also, just to kind of an FYI, this is the Playing With Patterns Designer Series paper. It is retiring, as are all but one of our designer papers in the annual catalog. Now bear in mind that the spring catalog items are good through June. It is technically the January through June catalog, so we have a little overlap with papers there. These dies right here, which are called nesting, uh, nested layers, these are retiring. They're heavily stitched, and there's a lot of different layers. They are retiring. And Inspiring Iris, which is the stamp set, again, that I used for my March Cards with a Twist class, it is also retiring. So just a little heads up there. And then the last show and tell today is from my special friend, Gail, and received this in the mail from her, and I just thought it was so clever, and I had to share it with you. So here she's used one of those intricate dies. This is actually one that retired last year, I believe, and she has made a corner with it. That's actually the way the die is, but she has actually adhered just the, the ends here so that it creates a pocket. And she's put a packet of seeds in there. And I will tell you, I love morning glories. They're such a fun flower to, uh, to grow. They grow really well here in South Texas. But then look at this, she put Happy Spring. This is that new dual oval punch and uh, put that little spring notification on there. So I have a little gift with my card. And so this is just a great way to gift someone something and also send them a really special card. And again, she's written some really special things inside there that I won't share with you, but I wanted to show you the uh, three of the handmade cards that I've received in recent days. Okay, just a couple of review things. Um, I showed you, I believe this was last Tuesday uh, for Teach Me Tuesday. We did, might have been two weeks ago, I can't remember. But this was showing you how to use the foam brayers, which are on the retiring list. Um, so this actual, the, the dies here are the Simply Succulent, Potted Succulent dies. They have made it into the new annual catalog. Alas, this little guy here, the words for, um, I think the name of the stamp set is His Love. Do I have the stamp? Oh. You know what, I have my retiring list, my top picks, and I believe it, it is called His Love. This stamp set is retiring, and so is this set of trim. So let me just show you a couple of cards. I actually did uh, one of my cards with a twist classes using this stamp set. I love the um, open, open Bible image. You're a blessing in my life. Has some great greetings. Um, rejoice and be glad. Here I used that favorite punch that is retiring, and that is the um, Butterfly Duet. Um, so, well, you can see my cards with a twist. See how I twist things. Um, and then there is the one with, it's a, there's a beautiful cross, an absolutely beautiful cross in this stamp set. And you'll notice that his love never fails. Look at it here in, with the round and look at it here with this die from the Simply Succulents. Looks really different depending on um, what kind of a um, tag you put it on. Um, this is a one and a half inch circle. It is also retiring this particular um, punch. This paper is the um, pretty peony garden paper, and that is also retiring. So that's my pitch for his love. It's on my uh, pick of top uh, top favorites that are retiring. And um, is everybody still here with me? I think so. Um, I think I will, instead of going on to more um, show and tell, I think I will go ahead and do a little bit of stamping with you. So I'm going to show you a, um, a fun fold. 
And I'm also gonna show you something about a particular ink. I'm actually a little bit surprised that this is retiring. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous double stamp set, as you can see. It is a red rubber stamp set, so it is beautiful, beautiful images. I love this tree trunk uh, image, um, kind of that slice of the tree trunk. And although you might think this is all for kind of fall images, you can actually, of course, this tree here is full of leaves. It's really not a fall tree. Cypress trees, they're kind of year round. Um, these are green year round, but we tend to associate them more with um, the winter. Um, if you like bold greetings, this is a really good stamp set for you. And if you are so inclined, there is a stellar set of dies that coordinate. So you can see how this will, you know, cut out the trees. I like that this cuts out these two because then you can kind of nestle this other one in and out and around about. Um, it does have its own little, and then you can also um, cut out the leaves, do some really cool things with these leaves. Um, this, uh, tr this little leaf right here is probably my, these two are my favorites right here. Now, if you have, if you want to cut out the, um, the stump, um, you do have to fussy cut that. There is this, this, which is one of the images I'm going to use today. So you can see everything, you're pretty well covered. And then these are actually really cool. These don't cut out. These actually give you an impression. So they're almost like a, like a little mini embossing folder that's just gonna give you an impression for the leaf. So really some stellar dies. I don't, I don't think these dies are on special. I mean, some of the dies right now are crazy, crazy clearance priced. Um, I mean, they're just off the charts. Uh, I showed you guys um, the world dies last oopsie, last week, and they are like 70%. They're more than, I think, yeah, I think they're 70% off. Crazy. So this is the stamp set I'm going to use, and um, this is in my top pick. This is in my top picks of retiring stamp sets. I didn't actually, I haven't actually published yet my top. Uh, picks of retiring stamp sets. I kind of went through quickly and went and grabbed my top favorites that were like crazy discounted priced. So this time um, I need to go through and do my top retiring, uh, my top picks of retiring stamp sets. Stamp sets are typically not reduced in price, but um, you know, stamps are really usually my favorite items that are retiring. Now this is definitely on my top um, list of retiring items and that is something that is also um, greatly reduced in price and stamp uh, designer series paper. So will somebody just let me know if you're still here with me? Because I am still rabbiting on. I can see me so I think we're here. Okay, so what I've done is I have uh, what is sometimes called a hot dog fold. It is 11 inches by four and a quarter. And what I'm going to do is to make this fancy fold or fun fold card, I'm going to feed this through my trimmer. I need to bring this my arm out because I need to extend my card. And I'm going to cut this at nine and a half Bring this down to nine and a half. I'm gonna cut this little piece off. Now, I'm gonna need that piece, so I'm gonna hang on to that. And I'm also going to cut at seven. Okay, Terry Lynn, you're here. Oh gosh, so I was, yeah, okay. Okay, I am still here. Yay, thank you for letting me know that. Um, and then I'm also going to come down to seven, and I'm going to cut there. Okay. Now, I'm going to hold those because they are going to come in very handy in just a little bit. So, I have used the um, thick, extra thick uh, Whisper White cardstock. It's the same weight as our other cardstocks, and so it makes a really good card base. If you, um, if you go to our regular 
Whisper White is it's quite thin. It's perfect for layering, but it is a little thin for a card base. So I do recommend um, that you that you use the thick, extra thick. I think, I think it's just called thick um, when you are um, using for a card base. Okay. So let's see what we're going to get on here. What we're going to do is we're going to actually put this on the inside of our fancy fold. And I am strategically using the Misty Moonlight because I'm going to pair it with this. This is a different pattern, but I, liked, I like the way these go together because it picks up the background. So this is going to be super easy because the, the fold itself is quite easy to make. It's really just about the cuts. But I also think that it's perfect for, oh, that's awfully pretty too. Oh, well, we're going to go with this one. Um, <laughs> I think this is a perfect way for showcasing designer series paper. And, you know, that's one of my absolute favorite things to design with because an artist has done all the work of making these beautiful, beautiful flowers. I mean, somebody went through and actually made this into a painting. And then that was converted into a digital file so it could be printed. So that's going to be the top part or the inside of my card. And I, I will put something there. I'm gonna pop that there. I will put the measurements out here for you. So let's go ahead. This is, I think this is one, maybe one and a quarter by four, I wanna say. But I will have the, the measurements out for you. So you can already see kind of how this is coming together very nicely with my white, um, my white surround. Now, I'm going to take this piece here and it's going to form um, the center of my card. And this is the other piece I cut off and that is gonna come down here. So let me go ahead and put my designer series paper here. So it's a little bit like a puzzle. It's a fun, it's a truly fun fold. It's fun for people to open. It's actually really fun to put together. A little bit like a uh, a puzzle or a Jenga game. And this is perfect when you don't have a lot that you want to write on the inside. Now, this is the way my card will look with this on the front. So let's see what we're gonna do here. We're actually going to put a little piece of misty moonlight. So this is all about the misty moonlight. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of those bold greetings from Rooted in Nature. This is the stamp set that we're using. And I'm using the, the big bold greetings. And I'm just going to use my black memento pad. I will say one of the things I really like about uh, Misty Moonlight, to me it looks like blue jeans. It's just like a like a like a nice worn pair of blue jeans. I've inked my stamp up really really well. One of the things I like about this font is it's very casual, and um, you don't have to place it exact. So if you place it a little bit crooked, it still looks good. Now you see, even though that's black ink on there, it really just looks like a darker version of Misty Moonlight. It doesn't look black because you're stamping on a colored cardstock. It, it blends in a different way than it does on the white because you're, you're adding the black to the existing color. So let me go ahead and clean my stamp. I will be a good girl here because I won't be using that again. And now I'm gonna take this little branch. I think this little branch is really sweet. And I like to have things that, that fit the scale of what I'm doing. And this is a fairly small piece, so I don't want some big honking image on there. I want something rather small. I'm gonna use the Whisper White ink. Now, some of you may or may not have used this before. When you purchase Whisper White ink, and you see I've got my little label there, it comes with an uninked pad and a refill. That's the way it comes. And it does cost a little bit more than our regular inks. It's because it says right here, this is a craft ink. That means that because of the nature of white ink, this is much more like a paint. 
So it's very, very thick, and it takes a little bit of time to dry. It's also really good for stamping on fabric. So I am going to ink this up, and I'm gonna put one here. And it's gonna give me a little bit of a chalkboard effect. Isn't that pretty? And I'm gonna put another one down here. And I just think that looks like blue jeans. So again, this is the Whisper White ink, and this is the way it comes. So it, it looks just like our other pads, but when you open to the inside, you will see that when you receive it, uh, it is a firm foam just like our others, but it will be uninked, and you can even see here where I've inked it and where the pad underneath here doesn't have any ink on it. But that's okay, that's just the way it comes. And it's because of the different properties of the type of ink that it is. Now I'm going to go ahead and clean that. Again, I'm going to be really good. And now let's just layer this onto, this is the piece that I cut out of the center of my card. So I'm just taking that that I cut off and I'm going to layer this right on there. And here we go. I'm gonna be a little bit careful because that ink may have not dried all the way just yet, so I need to kind of be a little mindful here. And I don't have, I need my little craft mat. Did I move it? Probably. That is my go-to help for getting my, getting my little um, seal moving here. Come on, baby, come on, baby. And when it doesn't want to get going, let me grab my, I try to keep one over here, but I'm really bad about moving things around. Let me grab my, my little mat. I find that um, for those of us who are rather heavy handed, um, with our stamping, we're the ones who struggle the most with the new stamp and seal. But this craft mat is the bomb for, <laughs> for getting it going again. See that? It just gives it every single time. So it just gets everything moving again. So this mat is going to go right like so. And now I am ready to attach this right here. Now, I could put it right in the center, but I think I'm going to put it off to the side just for fun. So let me put just seal right at the top. Now, I'm going to put two rows of it, but I'm only going to put it there at the top. I don't want it to go any farther because I don't want to infringe on the rest of that. This part I'm going to put right down here. So now I'm going to add, again, two rows of seal. And the best tip here is to line this up right at the bottom and then to close your card. And that is giving me my little fancy fold. Then what I wanna do next is I wanna put a little piece on the inside to write on and I need it to match this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put seal on each end and a little in the middle. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna line this up like so. And then I'm just going to lay it there and voila, might be a little crooked. No, I think it's actually pretty good. So that is the inside of my card, and that is my cute little fold. Really made special by all of that pretty designer series paper. Now, of course, you know me, I wanna put a little bit of doodad, I wanna put a little something something on there to uh, just finish things off. So I thought maybe a little bit of twine 
Um, I also have, these are retiring. Now, this twine is part of the snail mail twine. It is in the spring catalog, otherwise known as January to June, which means you can get it through the end of June. It is a, you get a roll or a spool of this twine. You get the white and you get the blushing bride. So you get two different rolls of this twine. It's actually really useful. And I think that the twine is a good fit with this kind of blue jean look on here. And that's gonna be kind of a nice little, a nice little something. I'm glad you like my fold, Jackie. It's actually a really good use of your paper too because this came, you know, all of these were cut off. The only added piece I did was this piece of Misty Moonlight and the little piece of white inside there to write on. So it really just takes a half sheet of cardstock and nothing extra. So you just kind of um, cut it apart and then you piece it back together again. So let's put this right here. Get a little, a little something soft there. And then I thought we might wanna take some of these little dots here. These are the um, in color enamel dots. These are retiring. These in colors are not retiring, but these little dots are. And this might just be a nice little something. And this is the, um, it's picking up the bumblebee color here which I think might be a nice little contrast, almost looks like little flowers here. So let's just do that. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is Teach Me Tuesday. A fun fold using some favorite retiring items. And yes, I will post the measurements. Um, I will have, I always, put together for Teach Me Tuesday in particular, uh, and I try to do it even on Thursdays, I put together what I call an inspiration sheet for you. So what it will have is it will have the measurements and it will have the supply list. But I think this turned out super cute. I'm really happy with it. Also kind of shows you how this is, although this, um, this design of, uh, this designer series paper coordinates with the uh, sunflower, um, stamp set. I've used an all um, foliage stamp set. It's trees and leaves, but look how nicely it works. I think, you know, these kinds of images, they're very useful. They just work with so many things. And I'm a sucker for really bold greetings, especially when you have kind of a darker color paper like this. If you put a really fine um, font greeting on here, it, it, won't, it won't stand out enough. So I like that big, bold greeting on there. And you know the nice thing about this fold as well is it gives me just enough room there to write just a few little, you know, sometimes you don't want to write a ton of stuff. Sometimes, and I think especially when somebody's going through a really hard time, cause, you know, less is more. So here I can just put like maybe a scripture verse, maybe a part of a scripture verse um, and, you know, prayed for you today. That's it. Boom. Done. The inspiration sheet will be right here on my Sweet Stamper Facebook page, Mary. So I always put it here later in the day. So, you know, come back and it will be here. Now I did have um, all of this left over uh, because I chose to go with the blue one. So let's just add that to the flap of our envelope here. And then we have a really, really nice matched set where um, I have a beautiful envelope to match my fun fold. So this is Teach Me Tuesday. I hope you've enjoyed. We are really still celebrating the retired list. And um, the way I do that is I'm going to be showcasing retired list things here um, until around the last 10 days or so of the month which I know is rapidly approaching. Ay, ay, ay. I think this is probably at the very end. <laughs> you know what? I do have another one over here. Let me grab that. Um, I will also tell you to stay tuned. I'm actually going to be doing a retirement party. So I'm gonna do 
um, a workshop here, a party, and with lots of prizes and face, kind of a, a lengthy Facebook Live. Um, so I'm trying to just figure out where in the calendar it's going to be. Um, so that will hopefully post by the end of the day. And if you've never been to one of my stamping parties before, you'll want to come. I'm going to do it right here on this page. I've, I've done it before in a different, um, in a different, um, group, but I'm just going to do it right here. Um, you could stamp a little sprig on the front of the envelope. You're right, Gail, in the misty moonlight. Marlene, you said you don't see the set being on sale yet. I don't believe it's on sale. So again, usually the stamp sets are not on sale, but this is on the retiring list. The, um, in fact, the, um, the, what do you call it? The, um, I don't think the dies are on sale either for this. And I think my, my theory as to why some of the dies are on sale and why some of them are not is because they ha it's the amount that they have in the warehouse that they need to move out of the way in order to make room for all of the new things coming in for the new catalog. And you know, just with the way that they've changed the way our catalogs are rolling out, um, and with there being a little overlap with the mini catalogs, um, I think that space is uh, more important or, or maybe uh, more valuable than ever. So there's my envelope, and I think that Gail is right. Let me uh, run over and grab my Misty Moonlight ink pad. I think that's gonna be the perfect touch. I'm super happy with the way this turned out. You know, most of the time when I come here to you guys, I haven't actually made this before. So I have some things in mind, but I hadn't actually done this. So. Um, it's just kind of the way I roll. I like to uh, kind of fly by the seat of my pants. It works really well for me most of the time. So it's the way I cook. It's just the way I create. So, hey, Kim, I'm so glad you're here from Michigan. Thank you so much for, sh uh, for sharing my video. That helps me so very much, and I appreciate it. Now, I am going to just do the second one without inking up, and look at that. Isn't that special? So, good call, Gail. She is just an excellent stamper. So there's the front of my envelope and there is the back of my envelope. And again, this is Rooted in Nature, one of my top picks from the retiring list. And again, another top pick from the retiring list is this beautiful, beautiful Flowers for All Seasons Designer Series paper. I I think this paper is on sale for like six dollars. It's dirt cheap. I remember that. Um, and these are also on the retiring list. I don't recall if they're on special. I don't think that they're reduced in price, but I might be wrong. So I will um, get your inspiration sheet here. Let's see. It's two forty-two. Hey, I did this in record time. So I gotta photograph this, because like I said, I usually have not made this before I come on camera. So I have to put my picture together afterwards and then um, finalize my little inspiration sheet. So um, be patient, but it should post by five o'clock at the latest. I'm hoping within the next hour it will be up. Uh, I am gonna, you know, I always run down and make a cup of tea when I'm done here. So that's just kind of my ritual and um, it's the way that I know I'm finished with Facebook Live for the day. Go down and make a cup of tea for my husband and I and uh, we're big tea drinkers. I was actually a big tea drinker before I ever moved to England and then I spent nine years in the UK and you know, when you live in England, you walk in somebody's house and before you've even sat down, they've already put a cup of tea in your hand. It's just... <laughs> You know, and of course, part of it is it's just so cold all the time. <laughs> that tea is just keeps you warm, and it's just it's just that thing that um, that um, connects everyone. Um, after church, there was always the the teapot is on the boil. Everybody has a cup of tea after church and visits. I mean, it's just a way of life, and and we never have um, lost it and. Yeah, so we still drink a lot of tea. And uh, Judy, I'm glad you like the tip on labeling the ink pads. It helps me a ton. Um, because a lot of times, yeah, you just look down and you can't see exactly what it is depending on which position it is on your table. 
So I think that that is all of the questions. And hey, Dolores, you're right here catching us at the end. Um, be sure I'm going to post this right now. So um, make sure that um, you catch the replay. Bigelow toasted coconut tea. Oh, that sounds interesting, Marlene. Tell me more. Is this a black tea that's that's flavored? Is it a um, is it a herbal tea? I will say there's not many teas I don't like. I, I drink herbal teas. Roy, rooibos, we drink rooibos in the evenings. Hey, Claudia. Um, I drink a lot of black tea um, and I'm a Thai Fu. You know, there's your regular household everyday teas in Britain and the most popular are uh, PG Tips and Thai Fu and I'm trying to think of the other one. Um, oh, it's a black tea. See, black teas are my favorites. I do enjoy green tea and I really like white tea as well. I drink oolong. Yeah, there's not much, there's not many teas I don't drink. But, oh, and constant comment. I love constant comment too, Gail. You know, it was, I think it was some of my first um, experiences with hot tea. I think I was like 10 years old and had it at somebody's house and I've always loved it. So anyway, uh, tea is um, one of my what are my other passions? I used to do some big tea parties here. I would do Downton Abbey tea and crafts nights, um, you know, before COVID and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, it was fancy fun and it was it was a good time. And I would do usually when I did those, I would do tea tastings. So we would I would usually make about I don't know three or four different pots of tea, and let everybody try different ones because a lot of times people haven't tried different teas. And I usually do loose leaf teas. I just find that. Um, I like to be able to control the strength of it. So you like white tea as well, Kim. It is, it's a very, it's a very delicate flavor and it's full of antioxidants. I mean, all your teas are really good for you. Um, but your white tea, yeah, it's the most delicate. So, well, I could talk tea. Maybe we'll do a fun tea. Maybe we'll do a tea, a tea time. And we'll all bring our favorite cup to uh, Facebook Live. That would be fun. So, um, and Simone, you drink the Starbucks teas. You know, I have, I have, I confess, I've had their hibiscus tea, but usually when I'm in Starbucks, I'm drinking a coffee. Um, but when I'm at home, I'm usually drinking tea. Sometimes I'll drink a cup of coffee in the morning, but the rest of the day I'm drinking tea. And sometimes it's actually embarrassing how much tea I drink. <laughs> I drink a lot of tea. So anyway, I'm just rabbiting on here now, folks. But, oh, and Jazz, oh, and Earl Grey. I do love Earl Grey. Oh, and I do enjoy Jasmine very much. And usually when we go to uh, the um, Chinese restaurants here, I always order a pot of Jasmine tea. Oh, Earl Grey is oh, one of my all-time favorites. You know, back in the day when you had the big houses like Downton, each house had its own blend of tea. And something I learned from actually one of my Dutch friends in the UK was how to take um, like a lot of my favorite loose black tea and add just a little bit of loose Earl Grey. Because sometimes Earl Grey can be a little bit overpowering, but if you add just a little bit in with your black tea, it's so lovely. And Marlene, you like pumpkin spice too. Oof, so many good teas, yeah, okay. That is it for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. I would love for you to share my video. It helps me so much. Um, stay tuned for my uh, inspiration sheet later today. And I will be back here on Thursday for simple and stepped up stamping. I've already got my ideas are churning. And I will see you then. In the meantime, please share, please like. It helps me so much. Thank you so much. Take care and God bless.